So uh, class of 2023 and parents and grandparents and everybody watching this, um, I just want to kind of reiterate what I just got to say to the seniors um, in person in the graduation breakfast uh, just you know a few minutes ago, uh, and it's that this job has been wonderful and it's become, because it's uh, allowed me to kind of live the, the advice that I'd like to give to you. Um, I actually got some advice from the, the primary school at the beginning of the year, played it for the seniors, uh, and the two things that stood out were, you know, there's one kid and he looked very seriously in the camera and said, don't ruin other people's day. And then the girl uh, right afterwards said, keep playing. And those were the two pieces of advice that I kind of thought, like if you can do these two things, don't ruin other people's day and keep playing, um, that's exactly what we want for you. And I think you're gonna have a really good experience wherever you go. Um, and I think, um, being a year head for this class, it's allowed me to hopefully improve your day, um, make your lives better, but boy, it's felt like playing. It's been fun. I've really, really enjoyed it, and uh, class of 2023, I wish you all the best. I'm Ryder Wood. This is our magical senior graduation operation. It is a large piece of plastic paper that we will lather with soap and throw ourselves on. We're currently employing the help of probably five, about five people to try to cover the entire thing with water.
to the 57th annual graduation ceremony here at Frankfurt International School. For the past four years, I have had the privilege of being the principal here in the upper school. To those of you joining us in person and to the thousands of you who are joining us around the world, welcome. Please rise and join me in welcoming the class of 2023. FIS graduates, parents, faculty, and special guests, my name is Shelley Kelly, and it is my pleasure to address you today on behalf of the FIS Board of Trustees. Our board chairperson, Julia Hereos Rinnert, was unable to be here today, so I am pleased to speak with you in my role as vice chair of our board. As I began thinking 
about what words of wisdom I might share with today's graduates, I thought back to one year ago when my own daughter, Claire, was a newly minted FIS 2022 graduate. At that time, maybe like some of the parents in the audience today, I also felt time was running out and it was time to impart those great life lessons as she made her way and through this important rite of passage beyond FIS and beyond our home. Now, just the other day, I was speaking with Claire, sharing my initial thoughts about today's speech. She quickly reminded me that it was really important not to make it about the teachers or about the parents in the room. She said, speak to the students. They have already been sitting here for five hours. Make it interesting. So I started over, and here it goes. When I was a young child, about seven years of age, I stumbled upon a four-leaf clover patch. It was profound because naturally, given my Irish roots, it symbolized luck. Now in 2010, my family and I had the opportunity to become part of the FIS community, and I recall the international relocation agent calling me up and said, drop everything, fill out these forms right now to secure a spot for admission at FIS, because if you don't, it most likely won't happen. To this day, I felt that luck was on my side when I answered that call and did exactly that. The privilege of experiencing an international education is an incredible gift, one that has hopefully opened your eyes to diverse cultures, perspectives, and ideas, and truly a gift for your entire family. Through this journey, you have broadened your horizons and established a deeper understanding of the world. And in doing so, you have become global citizens. How lucky for each of you. When you reflect on your educational journey, it's so easy to focus on the hard work, dedication, and perseverance, what got you here. Now, while these qualities are undoubtedly crucial, it's also essential to recognize that luck has played a role in these accomplishments as well. Luck in its various forms has influenced your path in countless ways. It could be the fortunate encounter with a mentor who gave up their lunch just to work with you, or that serendipitous connection with a counselor who saw something in you that perhaps opened brand new opportunities that you did not even see before. These moments of luck have shaped your experiences, broadened your perspectives, and propelled you forward. Now, just as I embarked on a global career, one that took me to interesting places and cultures with the good fortune to meet talented people and establish lifelong friendships, and it actually brought the best out in me, it was this gift of the FIS community and education for my children that when given the chance to either return to the US or, as they say, go local, I couldn't believe my luck. It was a gamble into the unknown that felt worth it for me and for my husband, Emmett. Another realization that what shaped my perspective on life is in the words, not knowing is freedom. These words attributed to Zen Buddhism hold deep meaning as we navigate the uncertainties that lie ahead. Now, throughout your academic journey, you have strived to gain knowledge, to seek answers, to uncover truths. You have worked diligently to blend creativity and service through acquiring expertise that allows your talents to shine through. And you have the foundation to be lifelong learners. Now, as you begin the next chapter in your life, you have the opportunity to embrace that freedom that comes with embracing the unknown. Luck, much like the unknown, is a force that operates beyond our control. It forces this unpredictability into our lives, challenging us to adapt and grow. When we recognize that we cannot control every outcome, when we embrace the uncertainty that lies beyond the realm of our knowledge, we open ourselves up to new possibilities. Now with your profound understanding as global citizens, 
Embracing the unknown opens doors to new perspectives and fresh discovery, leading you to a journey of constant learning and growth. Now, I earned a degree in economics with math emphasis from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. My education and career within the financial sector felt very much aligned with my personal goals, working in great cities like Chicago, London, New York, and now Frankfurt. But then in 2013, I started to question what was really going on in the world. The contradictions between my foundational education and what was happening across the world, this pursuit of capitalism without considering the impacts on our planet, the environment, and its people. The luck of working on an interesting project shifted my career path into one that focused on sustainability. And for me, actually, it was Kate Rayworth's book called Donut Economics, Seven Ways to Think Like a 21st Economist, that connected the dots of my traditional education to one that works for today's day and age. Now, luck can be seen as a catalyst that propels us forward, nudging us to the unexpected directions and presenting us with unforeseen chances. We understand that luck can lead us down paths we never anticipating, enabling us to discover hidden talents, passions, and aspirations that lie beyond the realm of our current understanding. Moreover, the intertwining of not knowing is freedom, and luck carries this importance of humility. There are factors beyond your control that will shape your journey, just as it shaped mine, and acknowledging the role of luck will help you to be keep grounded and open to the possibilities and pathways ahead. Sometimes it is as simple as just showing up, being present, which is a powerful catalyst for luck to manifest itself. Now, just before we moved to Frankfurt, we were at a dinner at the Milford Yacht Club in Connecticut. And sure enough, I found another four-leaf clover patch. After handing them out, to everyone we were with, it dawned on me that I was looking for this symbol of luck ever since I was a child, keeping an open mind and the heart to the possibility. As you embark on your uniquely individual paths beyond graduation, may you cherish the role of luck that has supported your journey May you embrace the freedom that comes with acknowledging the unknown, continuously seeking knowledge and understanding. On behalf of our Board of Trustees, I want to thank you, our graduates and our family, for building the exceptional community that we are all so fortunate to share. Please know that you will always be welcomed back as FIS, at, to FIS as members of the school's extended family within the Frankfurt area and beyond, wherever FIS gatherings create even more possibilities together. With that, I congratulate you and wish you a wonderful day. Good afternoon. It's, uh FIS graduates, colleagues, parents, and all of those that are joined virtually from across the globe. My name is Paul Fotchman. It's an honor to serve as your head of school here. And it's really, it's surreal to be here after the things that you take for granted. Uh, just a few short years ago, we were separated by 1.5 meters. All the parents could bring one guest. Things we took for granted, we didn't take for granted anymore. So it's so nice to have you all back in. And at the graduation breakfast, I said to John, I'm like, did we do this last year? And he's like, Paul, I've been here four years and we haven't had a graduation breakfast. I'm like, God, it's been that long. So, welcome. Um, so I considered talking to you about the emergence of the, out of the pandemic, but uh, somehow any talk of COVID, even though I gave you a little bit there, in the past tense was too much by Lord Voldemort and Harry Potter. It was the virus who will remain unnamed. I also thought about addressing you on the ubiquitous topic of AI and its impact on your life and the life of the school and how it may be an innovative disruption to education. I had planned on starting the first half of my speech using chat GPT, which I'm sure nobody in this room has done, uh, then stopping halfway through to tell you 
everything I've shared has been written by a computer. I'm, I'm, then I'm curious which half of the speech you would have enjoyed more. Given that AI is dominating the media, however, I thought maybe you've had enough of that. Instead, I'd like to speak to you what I, about something I'm calling THI, not BMI, not TMI, THI, to true human intelligence. And I, I doubt you'll find reference to THI in any scholarly journals. But what came to mind a few weeks ago as I made my rounds ar around the school, I passed by many of your faces on the boulevard and those wonderful posters that your families have put together, in the library as you huddled and crammed for those exams, and on the soccer pitch on a Sunday afternoon when a number of you looked over like, is he going to kick us off the field? Absolutely not. You're blown off steam and you've well deserved it. But it dawned on me that AI will never be a, a threat to THI, true human intelligence, because it can never form the bonds as those images that formed in my head over the last four years. AI can provide answers, possibly in the same way that a pill can provide vitamins and minerals to the body. But that's very different than experience of getting those vitamins and minerals by sharing a delicious meal with family and friends. The true human intelligence is centered on our ability to nourish one another through our relationships and meeting the needs that can't be defined by a program nor an algorithm. I was again struck by this idea of THI at this year's World Fest. For those that attended the event a few weeks ago, you'll remember it was an incredible day. The weather was absolutely perfect. The colorful parade of students and parents carried flags from around the world. Student musicians and dancers captivated our community with their creative two, true human intelligence on our outdoor stage. It was amazing. And of course, those amazing dishes served by the many cultural booths were yet another form of THI art. I have no doubt that some of those dishes were made by family recipes that have been passed down through the generations to the next and likely also relied on the keen sense of taste, something that remains out of reach for even the most advanced computer. I've attended many, many World Fests, but this year there was something special about the celebration that stayed with me. As I navigated among the thousands of students, parents, alumni, colleagues from around the world, I realized that FIS is striving to achieve something that is far more astonishing than any AI accomplishments we hear so much about. While our world faces the reality of war, both between and among nations, where we, our planet, faces threat to climate change and depleted resources, where political battles threaten not only to tear apart governments, but also communities and families. Here at FIS, we are striving to show that we can both recognize the painful realities, yet also productively engage in them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not naive enough to think that we can have one big humanity hug in here. Our goal cannot be that we're going to be friends with every person on the planet and applaud the beliefs that we disagree with. At the same time, FIS World Fest that had me in awe of our community, I know for a fact that there were booths that took issue with the presence of other booths. I have no doubt that there were volunteers within the same World Fest booth who were both completely disagreed with the politics or other aspects of society, yet they worked productively alongside one another. But that day was miraculously, miraculous precisely because at FIS, we strive to not only recognize our differences, but also to understand that such differences are inherent in the human condition. At FIS, we work on suspending our need to prove that our beliefs are right while others are wrong. We choose to embrace the discomfort, and it is uncomfortable at times to be in a school and community like this, but that comes with the acceptance that our beliefs are not the only valid beliefs. Is our school 100% successful 100% of the time? No, but given the diversity of our cultures and beliefs and values of our community of roughly 5,000 students and parents, I think we're a model international community of what the world could be. This is my message for today's graduates. I know that you've all spent countless hours studying so that you could provide the right answers on your exams. For many of you, getting the right answer is the difference between the acceptance to one college or another. It can be down to one point. Society in general, and the IB in particular, has made the goal of being right a very, very high priority. Here's the crux of the problem. As we grow into adults, 
Some of us continue to think that the overriding goal in life is to be right. It's a win or lose proposition. And mainly because they believe the only way they can be right is if somebody else is wrong. When I think in that limited fashion, we're acting more like a computer bound by AI rather than using our true human intelligence than the nuances of human relationships. The open-mindedness I'm talking about is not a moral relativism. It's not turning your back on your family's deeply held, held values. It's a belief that you do not enlighten someone by judging and condemning them or their community or their country. Instead, you make a real impact by leading your life as best as you can, allowing the example of your actions to be the way and the light that you dispel on the darkness of the world today. While I'm confident you all did great and really well in your IB exams, there are much bigger tests awaiting you beyond FIS. And one could argue these tests are even more important. They will determine whether or not our world becomes more unstable or whether you play a part in bringing about the needed progress and healing. If your view, views lead one end of a spectrum to a particular idea or concept, how capable are you to authentically listen to someone sharing a view from the other end of that spectrum? If your country is at war with another, is your first instinct to simply recognize that you now have an enemy? Or are there good, peace-loving people in that enemy territory? These are the unwritten exams that will be the test of your compassion, integrity, and open-mindedness. They are the exams that chat GPT will fail, and therefore your THI, your true human intelligence, is needed to make tomorrow better than today, and I have full confidence. As I look out to all of you today, and you're not 1.5 meters apart, which is so nice, I am confident that you will pass the test of character. You engage in the hard work of questioning the status quo, distangling myths from realities and breaking down the barriers set before you. You have been the class with peers who are different as you as night and day. They may not have become your friend, but you accepted them as equal right to pursue their own path, no matter how wildly different that is from your own. AI could not have processed or replicated what you have achieved because AI can only rely on metaphorically billions upon billions of data from the past to decide upon how to respond. Your true human intelligence can also learn from the past, but uses your skills of empathy, compassion, and creativity to envision a far brighter future. When you leave today, you can carry another label with you. It's not a label of your gender, your race, your nationality, or your religion. Your label is that of an FIS alum. I have no doubt that the life you will build and embrace the new ideas and different peers will be one that's grounded in THI, true human intelligence. This is a hope, but really more so, if I can say, this would be my expectation of each of you as an FIS alum. It is now my pleasure to shift topics and introduce today's guest speaker. Wendy Sachs, who is an FIS alum, class of 1976. Wendy was born in Japan moved to Frankfurt with her family and attended university in the United States, where she is now a successful film producer in New York City. Wendy returned to FIS in 2019, where she spent several days working with our dance, theater, and film students, as well as presenting a special screening of her documentary, Moving Stories. From Wendy's background, it is clear that she is a talented professional with an abundance of true human intelligence. Without further ado, Lights, camera, and action. We welcome back to FIS, Wendy Sachs. Thank you, Dr. Fotchman. Thank you all. And to the class of 2023, congratulations. 47, 47 years ago, I sat where you're sitting now. I too was reviewing my teenage years at FIS. It was the 1970s, and like you, we were kids of our time. What did that mean? Protests. 
The 70s were full of protests, and here at FIS, we too had a protest for the right for personal freedom of creative expression. What did that mean at FIS? Permission to wear blue jeans to school. In the 1970s, we were also the early experimenters of the IB exam. It was an experiment at the time, and there were about a handful of us that kind of sort of casually adopted to be the guinea pigs. I have to say, I've spent the last two days on the campus, and it thrills me that blue jeans are well and thriving in the FIS students' population. And more important, you're welcome. Um, more important, the IB exam is just jaw-dropping in how it has expanded from our time. It's remarkable. But now, looking back, I wondered what I would have wanted to know when I was in your seat. And I decided to speak to you today about your inner voice, yours and mine. Inner voices are complicated and powerful. They are informed by everything. The environment we're in, the people who surround us, and all the ways we learned. They can work for us, and they can work against us. They are also informed by what I call a felt sense, like a gut feeling, a heart-to-heart -heart encounter, or a sudden inspiration from our imaginations. These are often immediate physical sensations and seem at the core of T-H-I, true human intelligence. We did not consult, by the way. Anyway, they're at the core of being human. Listening to them can guide who we are, who we become, and the stories we tell, ourselves and each other. Today, I'm going to illustrate how my inner voice was cultivated right here at FIS and how listening within guided me to and through three film projects. My first story goes back to first grade. In 1964, another century you might notice, the school had two campuses, one here in Obo Ozo, Old Main, and some temporary huts, and there were dirt roads from the streetcar stop to the school and sort of outside the school. And believe it or not, cows still grazed on this ground here and kind of where the playing fields are. The other campus <clears throat> was downtown Frankfurt for grades one to three, and that's where I am. Every morning I walk through the front gate and occasionally I say hello to the groundskeeper and sometimes he nods back with a very polite Good morning. One day, I'm outside chatting with two girlfriends as he walks by with his wheelbarrow. I'm six years old. My family had just moved from Okinawa, and I want to fit in. One friend says, he's stupid. The other one chimes in, yeah, he's dumb. I hear in my own mind, he's always been really nice to me. But I say, yeah, he's stupid. Ugh. He hears me, but keeps going. The next morning, he motions me aside. Carefully, he says in broken English, don't call anyone stupid. You don't know. I feel terrible. I start crying and I apologize. He's super gentle, but he gestures to me with a finger for me to stay aware. And I vow at that moment to pay attention to my inner sense and to never call anyone stupid again. A high school memory. 
1976, a few months before graduation, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But many of my classmates did know, and their choosing paths in business, in the sciences, in the professions, I'm considering pre-med. I'm in The Hague, Holland, at the Model UN, which many of you are familiar with. I'm with other international students. After a full day of arguing, interrupting each other, debating policy, we are still gridlocked. That night, about a dozen of us from both sides of the debate go to see a Charlie Chaplin film, Modern Times. The film came out in 1936 and was a prescient warning about the dehumanizing effects of industrialization. As some of you may know, it's about a struggling factory worker who's overwhelmed by fast-paced conveyor belts, impossible time schedules, cruel supervision, and unreasonable timetables. Fortunately, by the end of the film, the character saves himself by walking away from the world of machines and into the countryside. Watching him struggle to remain human in an environment that punishes his basic needs, I begin thinking about my own future. Suddenly, I hear a voice in my own head, like a whisper. Someone has to protect the human heart. And then I hear another whisper. This is what I want to do. I want to tell these kinds of stories, stories about being human. The lights in the movie theater come up when I look around our group of international students is laughing, smiling, and referencing parts of the film. And yet just a few hours earlier, we'd been arguing on the floor of the simulated UN General Assembly, rivalrous, stubborn, and getting nowhere. And I realize stories that touch our hearts, our shared humanity, connect us. They create bridges. And if a story could bring down the walls between warring students at our Model UN, I wonder if they can create bridges between different countries and cultures. That idea interested me. Oscar Wilde said, the good we get from art is not what we learn from it. It's who we become through it. A story had inspired my inner voice. Listening to that voice redirected my life and shaped my future. After graduating from college, I ended up in Los Angeles. But no matter how many cultures I'd been exposed to here and immersed in here at FIS, nothing prepared me for the unique culture of Hollywood. In Frankfurt, streets are often named after important people like Kennedy Alley or Goethestrasse. In Los Angeles, I go for my first interview at the Disney Studios. At the entrance gate, I'm told, <clears throat> go straight on Snow White Boulevard, make a left on Mickey Mouse Lane, and park on Dopey Drive. Needless to say, I didn't get that job. <laughs> but eventually, I started working in a talent agency where Christopher Reeve, one of the biggest stars in Hollywood at that time, iconic for his portrayal of Superman, was a client. Chris, who was a serious actor, was looking for, to, looking for someone to find more complex stories, less Superman, more human. I left the agency to work directly for him. Little did I know that I would be relying on my inner voice, this kind of felt sense, my intuition, more than ever. Our office was at the Warner Brothers lot. My first day, I find my way, as I find my way, I pass office doors posted with the names of huge stars and their teams. Barbara Streisand, Goldie Hawn, Cher. These are like Beyonce and Taylor Swift today. 
I reach our door. I'll never forget this, actually. <laughs> Christopher Reeve, Wendy Sachs, creative executive. I loved the title, but I had no idea what a creative executive did. I enter my office, sit down at my desk, and reflect. I ask myself, what do I bring to this opportunity? My role was to find and evaluate material that would help Chris broaden his career into more meaningful work. How and where do I begin? And then I had this inspired thought. The writing I had been exposed to as an English and theater major in college, and far more foundationally right here at FIS, could be my guide. So while it seemed that I was alone in my office, in fact, I could draw on the company of Goethe, Baudelaire, Shakespeare, George Eliot, Virginia Woolf, poems from the Tang Dynasty that were my favorite. All use stories to illuminate the complex nature of being human. The studio was interested in projects that were formulaic with simple, easy marketable plots. My allegiance, however, was to Chris, not the studio. So balancing what the studio wanted and the emotionally nuanced stories that Chris wanted was challenging. Still, we found amazing projects. We have a great story about, no. We found a wonderful book about, no. We found this really tender story about, no. Years later, several of these projects became successful films starring other actors, such as Dead Poets Society with Robin Williams, Contact with Jodie Foster, and In Country with Bruce Willis. However, at the time, the studio wanted to keep Chris a product, an exhibit, not a human being. This was a world I neither understood nor liked. When our nine-month contract ended, I was out of work. In Los Angeles, the everyday sun felt oppressive. Believe it or not, I missed the rain. Soggy Frankfurt, the wet forests by the school, and even the mud at the FIS campus during all the years the school was under construction, which created havoc for the buses then, the way I hear traffic might still be a problem now. Funny how memories appear when one's at a crossroads. However, what really helped me move on were the friends I'd stayed in contact with and my family, perhaps people to the left or to the right of you or in front or behind you, and new friends who cared. For an international student, there's a common question that's hard to answer. Where are you from? It made me wonder if home was less of a noun than a verb, active and fluid, moving. Of course, home is found within and with the people we love. We can create it anywhere. I left Hollywood and relocated to New York. When I got to New York, independent film was on the rise. This generated new opportunities for diverse, unique, and original voices, and I was hoping to add mine. Of the many films I worked on, there are three of which I'm proudest. Songcatcher, Particle Fever, and Moving Stories. Each is about a human quest that required bridging of cultures. And they all came about from listening within and seeing their potential. Songcatcher was the first film I co-produced. On this one, I learned the importance of speaking up, even if you're under pressure to conform a lesson that I had learned at FIS. My boss was interested in the roots of American music. We hired one of the few female writer-directors of the time and together developed a story. In 1910, a woman musicologist denied tenure, flees to the isolated mountains of North Carolina, 
There she discovers a rich musical tradition of English-Scottish ballads kept alive in the secluded, tight-knit communities. At first, her ambition to bring these ballads to the outside world is seen as self-serving. The people wanted no part of it. But slowly, it is her attitude that changes and shifts. Attending gatherings of music and dance, sharing meals, relaxing into the beauty of the mountains, even falling in love, she becomes more compassionate. The people change too and start to trust her. Eventually, with a greater understanding of each other, they bring the music to the outside world, bridging cultures. In real life, mountain music became the basis of American folk, country, and rock and roll. One day, my boss calls from the set. Maggie, the director, wants to cut the scene where Lily, the character, says to her colleague, these songs must be scientifically collected. Can we cut the scene? I hesitate. I knew from experience that this line was critical. The problem is, I say, this line is the very core of the character. We need to show her moving from her head to her heart. If you cut it, we don't have an emotional arc for the story, and we won't have a film. One unexpected bonus, Songcatcher won a film festival award for the most compelling depiction of a scientist in a film. The line that was not cut was the only reference to science in the entire movie. We won, though, because people connected emotionally, internally, with a scientist. Sometimes your experience resonates in completely unexpected ways. Particle Fever is a documentary about the search for an actual particle, the Higgs boson, that was theorized to hold everything in the universe together. Our problem as filmmakers was, how do you create a gripping movie about a physics experiment? I should mention that at FIS, physics was not my strong suit. However, on this film, I learned that even if you don't know, or even if I didn't know much about the subject, I could be curious and contribute what I did know. When the writer-director pitches me the idea, he explains, an international group of physicists in Geneva is getting ready to conduct a monumental experiment using a machine, the Large Hadron Collider to smash atoms together. My ears perk up. I had this gut feeling this was a good story. Plus, a location in the Alps of Switzerland, scientists from all over the world, all different countries, collaborating for a common goal to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Of course I want to produce this. I'm an FIS graduate. My Hollywood education was about to pay off, too. Script formulas have their use. This is a quest story, I say to the director, maybe even a thriller. The search for the god particle, human minds against the universe. Will the universe reveal its secrets, yes or no? We also had the very existence of the planet at stake, at least according to the dire warnings of a French tabloid, which claimed that the day the machine would be turned on, it could suck all of us into a black hole. The day the machine was activated, we received an email from one of the scientists. All it said was, we're still here. The real story, however, was how the scientists struggled, some taking great personal risk to realize their highest ideals and to contribute to a greater understanding of the universe. And like artists, to try to make sense of the world in which we live. This was a human story. What they were working on was superhuman. In the case of the film, my limited knowledge in physics served me well. Because if scientists could make the film, could make physics understandable to me, we could make it understandable to a wide audience, and it worked. 
Filmmakers, like scientists, are collaborative. And on this film, we had an amazing team, the director, an Oscar-winning editor, and several additional producers. In 2016, the film won one of three inaugural Stephen Hawking medals for science communication. When you're part of a team, it's important to contribute your unique, authentic, and independent voice. And the third film, Moving Stories, I experienced the importance of mentors and teachers. In this documentary, we followed a group of dancers from the Battery Dance Company in New York City as they worked with young people around the world who lived in intense areas of intense conflict. In India, they worked with young girls who'd been abused. In South Korea, they brought together teens from South Korea, North Korea, and China. In Romania, they worked with youth from one of the poorest neighborhoods. Young people learned how to improvise and then choreograph, then share their stories with one another and their communities through the universal language of dance. Political and social barriers began to evaporate, and the necessary collaboration to create a performance built connection and trust. The premise of this film is that suffering is born from disconnection. Seeing this story as a film came directly from my experiences here at FIS. We have all been lucky to have had many caring teachers and mentors to guide us on our personal journeys. Right from the start, we have been learning to connect with respect and dignity, ethics, equity, and inclusion, bridging different cultures. Now and in the years to come, your international experiences here will matter. To quote from Ralph Walder Emerson, it's easy in the world to live after the world's opinion. It's easy in solitude to live after our own. But the great man, we would say person, is he who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude. Your unique voices matter. The real benefit of listening within is that we author our own lives, and those stories we tell guide the choices we make. You can listen to them, and you can change them. In this way, you are constantly writing and creating your own stories. In essence, you become the directors and the producers of your own lives. Currently, I'm consulting on a project about artists and scientists, and my next one is about prioritizing the laws of nature, following a medical doctor who runs a regenerative farm. When I sat where you are now, I never could have predicted how life turned out. The only thing I knew was my very next step, listening within, in concert with the outside world, I made decisions. So whether then or now, the essence of being an FIS graduate is the same. To strive for humanitarian values, find meaning and purpose and beauty, remain open-minded and open-hearted, and cherish the friendships and relationships you have cultivated here. My invitation to you, listen to your inner wisdom. Let that help guide and distinguish you. And like Charlie Chaplin in modern times, take good care of your human nature to be sentient, imaginative, and connected with a sincere heart. It is my honor to speak to you today, to each and every one of you. Congratulations.
Thank you very much, Wendy, for your inspirational words and your moving story. We are so grateful that you made the trip back to FIS to share your memories and thoughts of your time as a student. What a wonderful tribute to the past, the present, and the future community here at Frankfurt International School. Let's give Wendy another round of applause, please. For the remainder of graduation today, I will act as the master of ceremonies and will try my best to keep the proceedings moving along and hopefully on time. If you have a program in front of you, you can follow along. So let's continue with our first musical performance. Our first student performance today is by one of our graduating seniors, Mariana Cherniecki. Mariana will be singing Slipping Through My Fingers, which was written by the Swedish group ABBA back in 1981. You may know it as part of the soundtrack to the musical Mamma Mia. The lyrics are from a parent's perspective about their regret and just how quickly their child has grown up and how fast time has gone by. I think most of us in this room will be able to relate to this. Ladies and gentlemen, Mariana Cherniecki. Oh 
Isn't that great? Wow. Next up is our faculty speaker. Each year, the graduating class chooses a member of the teaching faculty to speak on behalf of the upper school community. This year, the class of 2023 chose Miss Luisa Rosetto. Miss Rosetto joined FIS in 2018 when this class was in grade eight. Miss Rosetto has taught elementary and middle school German, IB mathematics, she's been the identity language coordinator and a homeroom teacher for grade 12. Selected by the class of 2023, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this year's faculty speaker, Ms. Louisa Rosetto. Class of 2023, dear families, dear colleagues, dear guests, we all sit here today experiencing quite different emotions. Some of us are thrilled for the stress of the IB exams to be over, while others are sad to leave the special place behind. Some might feel a little anxious in the prospect of the unknown that lies ahead of them. For some families, this might be a goodbye, sending their last child off into the world. While for others, this is a beautiful connection, a beautiful occasion to reconnect. I was truly humbled when I was asked to speak today. And I wanted to use my time wisely to say something meaningful about our community and the special group of students. I must admit, I also was a little nervous to address this large crowd and Although I do speak in front of people for a living, it's quite rare that they're all listening. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Um, I believe the essence of our community can best be captured by the proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, which for me is representative of the shared responsibility we all have in guiding young minds far beyond the classroom. I believe that the important qualities like sincerity, selflessness, and kindness are all taught best through example than by long speeches. So I am amazed and I find it so powerful to see the many examples that we have in our community. Whether this is on a sports field, a class trip, or in the mundane environment of a homeroom morning. In this village, we have laughed together. We have supported one another through many challenges. We have celebrated countless victories, like our varsity basketball girls who went undefeated for the past three years. Woohoo! <laughs> and um, I would like to make this point quite strongly. We have accepted numerous extensions on deadlines, we helped each other stand tall in defeat and faced our fears with the encouragement of others, like sitting together in the front of a roller coaster in Europa Park, despite being terrified of heights. We've watched you grow from curious children into young adults who embrace their values and speak their truths. Last week, I solicited feedback to my speech from younger students, and they asked me, does that mean that everything we've learned in the classroom is really meaningless then? No. This is not the message. Um, dear class of 2023, as you step into this next chapter of your lives, please remember that the village will always be with you. The friendships formed here and the lessons learned will continue to shape your journeys far beyond FIS. Every day you will get to decide what type of person you want to be, in your actions, in your relationships, and in the way you think about yourselves. 
I hope that you embrace the unknown with open hearts and that you get to feel the same sense of purpose that we felt guiding you to this point in your lives here today. Class of 2023, it has been an honor. Thank you, Mr. Zetto. It does take a village. Now on to the first set of awards. Actually, at our graduation breakfast this morning, we recognized a number of students who were awarded individual subject awards. To the students who received awards earlier today, could you please rise so that you can be acknowledged by your community? Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Now on to the first set of awards. At the end of last year, the Board of Trustees adopted a new approach to awards given out at today's graduation ceremony. We've reduced the number of awards given out this afternoon, and as I said, we, we shared some earlier today. Each award has a specific criteria and a selection panel consisting of teachers, counselors, a board member, and school administration. Our first award today is the Academic Excellence Award, and I'd ask that Mr. Sinclair help me out with this award. The FIS Award for Academic Excellence recognizes a student or students who have achieved high academic performance across multiple disciplines and has shown, shown strong commitment, resilience, and perseverance towards learning. Students must show determination to achieve mastery of learning in a variety of academic subjects, the ability to continually adapt and remain optimistic in the face of adversity, the continued effort to achieve a goal over a period of time. This year we recognize two students for academic excellence. Together they represent a range of diverse interests and strengths. They have each stood out for being some of the brightest, hardworking and engaged students whose academic achievements not only reflect a keen work ethic but also a genuine enthusiasm for learning across disciplines. We look forward to learning how these highly motivated students will further impact their academic environments as they continue their education around the world. It is my absolute pleasure to recognize this year's Academic Achievement Awards to Isabella Paganini and Kim Staffledge. Please come forward. Our next award is the FIS PTG Parent Teacher Group Leadership Award. And I'd like to ask Shafali Kothari, a former PTG president, to come to the stage and help present this award. The PTG Leadership Award recognizes a student who has used their intellect, their initiative and creativity and character to enrich and bring impactful, long-lasting change to a team, club, or a group. This year's recipient came to FIS in February of 2017 in the middle of grade five. He has taken on leadership roles in all aspects of the school, including the Model United Nations and the Peer Tutoring Network. However, his biggest leadership opportunity came in the creation of the FIS Science and Technology Commission. He wrote a complete charter with bylaws and lobbied the school leadership to turn this idea into a reality. While FIS already had a science club, the student wanted to create a group of student scientists who could focus on designing, 
performing and sharing experiments across disciplines and ideally across different schools. While COVID ultimately ended the hopes for a conference last year, his spirit was undeterred. The Commission is already making plans for next year with a student-centered science approach well and truly in place, thanks to his relentless spirit and dedication. Next year, he'll continue pursuing his passion for science at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce this year's PTG Leadership Award to Wu Jun Lee. So today's ceremony is all about celebrating students. It is therefore fitting that these students have an opportunity to express their thoughts. The seniors of this graduating class voted on two speakers to represent them this afternoon. So now let's hear from the first student speaker, Maria Gruev. Maria came to us in 2014 as an eager fourth grader. Next year, she's hopefully off to Switzerland to study computer science at the ETIHA in Zurich. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our first student speaker, Maria Gruev. Parents, faculty, and the highly celebrated class of 2023. Allow me to set the scene. There I sat on my blue duvet, hunched over my laptop, rereading Mr. Wynn's email. Reminder, graduation speeches are due March 8th. A glance at the time showed 11 p.m. March 7th. Precisely one burst of motivation later, I began to write. I wrote this speech in the same fashion I completed most, if not all, of my IB assignments. I call it fashionably late. My teachers would say struggles with deadlines. As I scoured YouTube for inspiration, I found it difficult relating to the ups and downs of other high school students, knowing they've never felt the pain of writing an extended essay or being on Mr. Wynn's late list. That being said, those other high school seniors will also never know what it was to go kayaking on a rainy day, ride the same Russian roller coaster ride at Europa Park four times in a row, or play football golf in August's sweltering sun. Mr. Wynn, thank you for bringing us together as a class by providing us with these activities and much, much more. Although we all caught colds afterwards, it was worth it to watch a certain group's canoe capsize. Looking further back, past the quarantined blur of ninth and eighth grade, we can all reminisce fondly, or maybe not that fondly, on the awkward middle school years. We were style icons. I donned my bubblegum pink glasses and my friends cut their own bangs that were simply all the rage in eighth grade. We commit shenanigans on an international scale as we traveled to Sassfe, Rottenburg, Bregenz, and then Manderscheid. Over time, birthday parties turned from cake decorating as sleepovers to sweaty rounds of laser tag to epic ragers with copious amounts of lemonade. And while we still play Mario Kart on the Wii, we now also traverse the dark streets of Frankfurt on a Friday night. Personal life aside, my time within the FIS upper school has been full of four, sorry, seven Euro cafeteria lunches, Etika runs before late practices, emails and negotiating extensions, which huge, huge thank you to Ms. Vandermeer for her seemingly endless patience and kindness. Frantically studying for exams in the library, sleeping on the bus to school, 
and sharing a laugh with hopefully every person in this room, even you, Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> We've all been friends at one time or another, and I hope to remain that way for the foreseeable future, at least with most of you. I've probably made eye contact with every single clock in this school, at least hundreds of times, counting down the minutes until the end of the period, the day, the week, our next break, our next year. But I look back on this counting with nostalgia. It has done me no good. Perhaps if I dedicated as much time to my IAs as my clock watching, I would have finished with time to spare. <laughs> now, if you were one of those people who did submit everything on time, firstly, I applaud you. From the bottom of my heart do I wish I was you. Secondly, feel free to tune out for the next 30 seconds as I share my heart-wrenching, harrowing struggle story. One of the biggest factors that, that has held me back over the past two years was a lack of motivation. The start of an IA, essay, or assignment loomed before me like an impenetrable cliff. I seemed to have lost my motivation along the way, somewhere in a Zoom call or under my bed. My parents helped me look for it. My dad tried to find it in organizational Excel spreadsheets. My mom in conversations about the future. Thank you so much, mom and dad, for supporting me through this two-year-long journey. Ultimately, though, what pulled me out was seeing the light at the end of the tunnel as January turned to February. With the end of school rapidly approaching, regardless of how nostalgic I grew, I finally saw the jigsaw falling into place, the fruits of my labor. The feeling of relief ripened. My efforts were received and noted. I would never again have to look at the six-digit code KBJ776. And for that, I am grateful. With high school laid to rest, having looked at the good, the bad, the ugly, having looked at the clocks, the spreadsheets, the IA cover pages, I would now like to look forwards. We all have very different and separate paths. As isolating as this may seem, it's nice to know I'll always have a place to stay in Australia, Turkey, Chile, and so forth. I'm keeping my snap maps on, as I hope you all do, so we all know where to find each other. And I promise I'm not a stalker. Although, now that we move into this so-called professional world, I suppose I'll have to switch over from Snapchat into LinkedIn, where we'll share our success stories and publish articles. Although our definitions of success may vary, I think we succeed when we achieve personal happiness and accomplish our goals. Now, I shouldn't be saying this or it won't come true, but every wish I make on an eyelash, a ladybug, and birthday candles has been for happiness and success. Now, I extend that wish towards everyone here. Aww. <laughs> While I'm sad at this ending, I think we all deserve the sweet taste of success at having accomplished something so daunting, so difficult, so time consuming. It has been a work in progress, as we have not only defeated the monster of the IB, but of our entire secondary and primary education. Now that we have completed this, I hope we all go out knowing, as corny as it sounds, that we can accomplish anything. We shouldn't underestimate ourselves, undersell our own abilities. I will hold this diploma, which I am yet to receive, with pride, because I know how difficult it was to achieve it. And so what if we're cocky? Ronda Rousey once said, some people like to call me cocky or arrogant, but I just think, how dare you assume I should think less of myself? We can all confidently hold ourselves in high regard, knowing that we have put in the work and achieved success. Today, we should celebrate ourselves for our past achievements and future success. Deepest of thank yous to everyone who lent a helping hand along the way. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2023. Next up is our second musical performance. It will be performed at the piano by Lucas Kunke. Let's give him a round of applause. As the program notes, he'll be performing a piece by the Hungarian composer and virtuoso pianist Franz Liszt, entitled Liebstraum Number no. Three in A Flat. Liszt wrote these three pieces. I think Liebstraum, Dreams of Love, in 1850 in Weimar, which is actually less than three hours from here by train. 
Uh, this particular piece, number three, is based on a poem by Ferdinand Verlilligrath called Love As Long As Love You Can. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Kunka.
Thank you, Lucas, that was excellent. Next up is our second student speaker chosen by the class of 2023. Our second speaker today is Owen Lepore. <laughs> Owen joined us in grade eight from New Jersey. He's off next year to study at University College London where he hopes to be studying liberal arts and sciences. But before he goes, let's hear from him about his reflection on his time here at FIS. Ladies and gentlemen, Owen Lepore. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by briefly thanking some people who have worked tirelessly over the past two years to ensure that every one of us is here graduating today. First and foremost, thank you to Mr. Wynn. As our year head, Mr. Wynn has bravely led this grade through the battlefield of high school, devoting time, energy, and so many emails to ensure that we emerge triumphant. Many thanks to Frau Storm for helping us to pull off this special day. To the counselors, thank you for helping us navigate the unknowns of high schools and for readying of us for the phase of our lives that follows it. Thank you to the housemeisters, the cleaning staff, our mark, the tech deck, the security team, and all the individuals working tirelessly behind closed doors whom we often forget to thank. Also, a massive thank you to Ms. Vandermeer for ensuring that the class that is allegedly the worst in recent history at meeting deadlines actually meets those deadlines. It's safe to say that without her, many of us, myself included, would not be here graduating today. The stress we've caused her has without a doubt taken a few years off of her life, and for that, I'd like to personally apologize. Lastly, thank you to all of the teachers who, for the past two years, have showcased their unparalleled patience, having to endure our relentless complaints, rampant procrastination, and never-ending reasons for why we, well, some of you guys, deserve extensions on assignments you've known about for months. Despite all this, our teachers have never wavered and granted us the best education one could ask for. And finally, to you, the class of 2023. As I look around this room and see this extraordinarily talented and unique group of individuals with whom I've shared so much, I can finally say, we made it. And while it certainly hasn't always been easy, these past four years definitely have been memorable. It all began on the first day of ninth grade. We arrived at school brimming with anticipation and excitement, eager to start what parents and teachers told us was going to be the most memorable and transformative period of our teenage years. No amount of warning could have prepared us for what was to come, however. The year launched with relative normalcy. We met new faces and reinforced old bonds with familiar ones during our week-long stint in Mandescheid, learning the importance of waking up on time if you wish to remain dry, and some of us, more than others, gained the skill of map reading to navigate successfully through the wilderness without the assistance of a rescue van. Then, all of a sudden, right as we were hitting our stride as high schoolers, we were shut down. COVID-19 had struck and sent us into the unknowns of the distance learning program. Through DLP, we learned how to procrastinate, often prioritizing sleep over our PE portfolios and house party calls over our sleep. We carried these valuable skills into 10th grade as we bounced between hiding behind a COVID-19 mask in class and hiding behind our turned off cameras on Zoom at home. Soon, however, we were back and things started slowly returning to normal. Just like that, we were IB students and our work actually mattered. We hit the ground running, completing IAs, IOs, EEs, and CAS. And then, of course, writing reflections on those IAs, IOs, EEs, and CAS. Despite excessive amounts of reflecting, we still had time for extracurriculars, which granted us new friends and new passions. We excelled in the performing arts as we played in band and orchestra and put on numerous drama productions. We took on roles in service groups and set out to spark change in the global community. We traveled Europe for MUN and debate and competed in sports, winning championships in ISSTs and SKIS and Team of the Week awards in Friday footy. We applied for universities and walked away from Europa Park feeling as enriched as ever. We collectively fell behind on assignments together, making the words, I'm also on the red list, the most comforting thing one could hear. Over the past four years, these events have united us, giving us good memories that will last us a lifetime. As of today, high school is over. And while these last four years will always remain a part of our lives, tomorrow we go our separate ways, beginning a new chapter in our lives. Many of us might not have any inclination where we'll be five years from now, and that uncertainty is unsettling and can be intimidating. However, as I look around this room at the people I grew up and endured so much with, I am filled with confidence. If the past few years have shown us anything, it's that there's nothing this group cannot handle. 
We have seen uncertainty and adversity like no other and came out stronger than ever. I do not know what the future has in store for us. I do not know where we'll be or what we'll do, but I do know that whatever life may throw at us, we are ready. And so to the class of 2023, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for making these last four years truly memorable. I wish you all the best in whatever life may bring you and know this class will go on to do great things. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Next up is the second set of awards. The first one will be the FIS Alumni Service Award. And I'd like to ask Ms. Wendy Sachs, our distinguished alumni, to come forward to help me with award, this award. So this award recognizes a student who has been a role model of social responsibility and global citizenship by contributing pos positively and consistently to our local and or global community, demonstrating open-mindedness, empathy, and compassion. Our recipient this year came to FIS in 2008 as a student in first steps. His entire education has been at FIS. And over these past 15 years, he has thrived in our learning community, whether it be on the performing arts stage or the 15 Model United Nations stages he has been on during his time here. His leadership and service is second to none. He established the Gender and Sexuality Awareness Group with a mission of inclusion to ensure that all students in our community feel safe, valued, and heard. Next year, he's off to Tufts University in Boston to study international relations. This year's FIS Alumni Service Award is Alexander Fial. Our final award presented today is our Board of Trustees Award, and I'll ask our Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Shelley Kelly, to come to the stage to help me present these awards. The Board of Trustee Mission Award recognizes a student or students who exemplify the ideals of the school's mission through the pillars of excellence, opportunity, and balance. This year, the Board has chosen two recipients. The first recipient of the Mission Award came to FIS in 2020 as a grade 10 student and quickly made a positive impact in our community. Whether as an incredible singer on the stage of our theater or in assemblies, in the badminton club or on the volleyball court, she is simply an outstanding member of our learning community. Off next year to study musical theater at Point Park University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, our first Mission Award recipient, Mizuki Shuzenji. Our second recipient came to FIS in grade nine. Her compassion, thoughtfulness, and maturity is simply remarkable. She is equally strong in languages as she is in sciences, as she is in mathematics. She is a student athlete, as well as a leader in our peer education network. Perhaps most impressive is her commitment to community service and international understanding. And perhaps it is also not surprising that next year, She's off to Georgetown University to study international relations. Please join me in congratulating our second Board of Trustees Mission Award recipient, Isabella Paganini.
So if you've been following along in the program, you're at the probably the most important part many of you have been waiting for all afternoon, the presentation of the senior class and the awarding of the diplomas. <laughs> So I'd now like to ask our Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Ms. Shelley Kelly, to return to the stage, as well as our Head of School, Dr. Pochman, to join me. And Ms. Frau Christiana Storm will be reading the names out as students walk across. What we've planned on doing is to introduce each student, and I'll say a little bit about each of them as they receive their diploma, maybe where they came from, schools beforehand, where they're going, and who they would like to thank. Everybody ready? We'll do it alphabetical by homeroom. So the first homeroom we will recognize, you can see the banners up there, is from Miss uh, Adi Blackyear, our first student. Eva Katarina Berner. <laughs> Eva joined us in pre-primary school. Next year, she's off to study International Business Administration at Erasmus University in Rotterdam. She'd like to thank her parents for their support. Chen Chiyan. Chiyan joined us in grade five. Next year, she's off to New York City to study at the School of Visual Arts. She'd like to thank her parents, Ms. Harao, Ms. Junich, and Ms. Angelidis. Enya Rose Crowley. Enya joined us in first Steps. This is her only school. Next year, she's off to the University of Cambridge to study English literature. She'd like to thank her family, her friends, and 16 years worth of great teachers. Anouk Sidney Cumming. Anouk joined us in 12th grade coming to us from a number of schools in a number of countries, the United States, Namibia, Canada, India, and the Netherlands. Next year, she's back to the Netherlands, to the, or, sorry, to the University of Edinburgh to study history. She would like to thank her parents for supporting her throughout the entire of her school year. Wesley Art Arthur Fulek. Wesley joined us in grade 10. Next year, he's off to Florida to Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. He'd like to thank Mr. Wynn, Ms. Rosetto, Mr. Sarstedt, and Mr. Gregg. Emily Grigo. Emily joined us in grade one. Next year, she's hoping to attend the University of St. Andrews to study economics in Scotland. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Nicole Onpu Gulliver. Nicole joined us in ninth grade. Next year, she's off to Canada to the University of Toronto to study forensic anthropology. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Michelle Yumin Ko. Michelle joined us in grade eight. And next year, she's off to the University of Amsterdam to study psychology. She'd like to thank her family for always being her biggest supporters. Kylie Jane Kuta. Kylie joined us in grade nine from schools in the United States and Mexico. Next year, she's off to New York University to study theater. She'd like to thank her family and Mr. Starset and Ms. Abrams for their help. E. Ujun. As I mentioned earlier, Woodrum joined us in grade five, and next year he's off to Korea to study at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. <laughs> We'd like to thank his family and friends. Edward Ajani Picardo. 
Edward joined us in ninth grade from the States. Next year, he's off to North Carolina Agricultural and Technical Stat University. He'd like to thank his parents for playing a pivotal role towards nurturing his education. Nathaniel Bradley Powell. Nathan joined us in grade 10 from the Wood Grove High School in the States. Next year, he's off to the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics. He would like to thank his parents. Brooke Elizabeth Reigns. Brooke joined us in grade 11. And next year, she's off to the United States to study communications. She'd like to thank Ms. Jessam and Ms. Rosetto. Selby Selby joined us in grade three. Next year, she's taking a gap year or possibly starting university either in Germany or Poland. Her applications are in progress. She'd like to thank her sister. Nicolas Philipp Schwabe. Nicholas joined us in grade 11. He's got some applications in progress next year to study in the United States. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Chirag Sen. Chirag joined us in ninth grade, coming from India. He's got some applications in progress to universities here in Germany, and he would like to thank his parents. Soria Singh. Soria joined us in grade eight. Next year, he's taking a gap year with some applications in progress aiming to study medicine here in Germany. He'd like to thank his parents and teachers. Kasturi Ahmed Telang. Kasturi joined us in 10th grade. Next year, she's off to the University of Toronto, which she just found out on Monday. She'd like to thank her biology teacher, Ms. Grobau, during her time here, as well as her parents. Iris Kiriaki Vala. Iris joined us in grade six. Next year, she's off to Durham University in the UK to study visual arts and film. She'd like to thank her parents, Miss Piera and Miss Vandermeer. Yoon Kipchan. Kipchan joined us in grade seven in South Korea. Next year, he's back to South Korea. University undecided, but he hopes to study computer science. He'd like to thank his mother, Soyoung Na. The next homeroom, Mr. Draft. Jonathan Titus Ackermann. Jonathan joined us in primary school. Next year, he's off to stay in Germany in Berlin at the Academy Moda and Design. He'd like to thank his brother, Max. Mark Kalistru. Mark joined us in grade one. Next year, he's off to the UK, to Durham University, to study biological sciences. He'd like to thank his parents, his brother, Mr. Wynn, Mr. Ward, and Ms. Grabau. Lily Grace Cohen. 
Emily joined us in grade 10. Next year, she's off to the States, to Boston University to study journalism. She'd like to thank her family and Miss Angelides. Mariana Nora Janetsky. Mariana joined us in grade three. Next year, she might be off to Canada, to McGill University, to study gender, sexuality, feminist, and social justice studies. Elena June Epler. Elena joined us in grade two. Next year, she's on a gap year, show jumping with her horse and pursuing internships in ski and, and ski instructor training. Karina Kinetz. Karina joined us in grade 11. Next year, she's off to Tilburg University in the Netherlands to study global law. She'd like to thank Jess, her bestie. Florian Glantz. Florian's been here since primary school. Next year, he's on a gap year to do some internships and some travel. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Luo Tieni. Tian Yu came to us in grade eight. Next year, she's off to Amsterdam to Bridge University to study artificial intelligence. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Maël Louis Conta Mangin. Maël joined us in 12th grade, coming to us from Belgium, Italy, China, Singapore, the States, and Canada. Next year, he's off to the Netherlands to Maastricht University, Bachelor of Liberal Arts and Science. I'd like to thank his parents, grandparents, and all of his teachers. Thomas James Mayock. Thomas joined us in the eighth grade. Next year, he's off to the UK to Durham University to study electronic engineering. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Maximilian Philipp Schiller. Maximilian joined us in the fifth grade. Next year, he's off to the States, to Syracuse University to study architecture. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Frieda Dada Zoe Schmidheikam. Frieda joined us in pre-primary. Next year, she wants to stay in Germany. She's got some applications in progress to study physics. She'd like to thank her parents, grandparents, and sister for supporting her through everything. May Shelton. May joined us in 11th grade. Next year, she'll be at the Florida International University of Miami. She'd like to thank her friends, family, and teachers, both those who taught her and those she met in the halls. To everyone over the last 18 years, thank you for your love and support. Shen Yuting. Yuting joined us in grade seven. Next year, she's off to the UK, to King's College in London, to study computer science. She'd like to thank her best friends, Ambrose and Ines. Song Soyoung. Soyoung joined us in grade eight. Next year, she hopes to attend a Korea university in biotechnology. She'd like to thank her mom, her dad, and her sister. Peter Johann Walter. Peter joined us in grade five. Next year, he's off to the United States to Columbia University to study history. He would like to thank his parents for their amazing support. Gaurav 
Yadav. Gaurav joined us in grade 11. He's got some applications in progress to German universities to study mechanical engineering. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Bernhard Ulrich Zieler. Bernard joined us in fifth grade. Next year, he's off to Erasmus Rotterdam School of Management, International Business Administration. He'd like to thank his parents, friends, and teachers. Next up is the homeroom Griebel. Ambrose M. Ambrose joined us in the ninth grade. Next year, he's off to the University, sorry, Queen Mary University of London to study history. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Suzette Sarah Becker. Suzette joined us in the pre-primary. Next year, she hopes to attend the EBS European Business School to study law. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Ines Elisabeth Alice Furnot. Ines joined us in the ninth grade, coming to us from Tanglin Trust School in Singapore. Next year, she's off to the University of Manchester to study biology. Hanako joined us in grade eight. Next year, she's off to Minerva Art Academy in the Netherlands to study design. She would like to thank her parents and friends. Frederick William Hollis. Frederick joined us in primary school. Next year, he hopes to study physics in either the UK or Germany. I'd like to thank his family and friends. David Ilyas. David joined us in grade six, coming to us from Kiev International School. Next year, he's off to the Netherlands, to Maastricht University, to study European law. He'd like to thank his parents, Mr. Wade and Ms. Rosento. Ito Takanori. Hans joined us in grade five, coming to us from the British International School in Shanghai. Next year, he's off to the University of Tokyo. He'd like to thank his mom for helping make his life as comfortable and as enjoyable as possible. <laughs> Noel William Kahn. Noel joined us in 11th grade, coming to us from Kuwait, the American International School. Next year, he's in the Netherlands at the University of Groningen, studying physics and math. He'd like to thank his mother and father, or as he says, the greatest of all time. Ali Sharif Mohamed Anwar Kata. Ali joined us in grade 11 from the Dubai International Academy. Next year, he's in the UK at the University of Bristol to study medicine. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Ejin Pill. Jim Pill joined us in grade two, coming to us from South Korea. Next year, he'll be studying computer science, either in Germany or the Netherlands. He would like to thank his family and his teachers. Ease Homing. 
Soman joined us in grade 10, coming to us from the International School here in Frankfurt. She has applications in progress to study medicine in Korea. She'd like to thank her parents and her FIS teachers. Daniel Alexander Rederer. Daniel joined us in primary school. Next year, he hopes to be off to the IE University in Spain to study business management. He'd like to thank his parents and his teachers throughout the years. Shusenji Mizuki. Mizuki joined us in the 10th grade, coming to us from the International School of Frankfurt. Next year, as I mentioned earlier, off to Point Park University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to study musical theater. She'd like to thank her family, friends, and all of her teachers. Finn T. Smith. Finn joined us in grade six. Next year, he's Got some applications in progress to the Netherlands and the UK to study business administration. He'd like to thank his mother and father. Cao Ujun. Virginia came to us in ninth grade from the Taipei Municipal Junior High School in Taipei, Taiwan. Next year, she's off to The Hague, studying at the University of Applied Sciences, Design Engineering. I'd like to thank her family and friends. Ooh, Stefan. Stefan joined us in grade five. Next year, he's off to the United States, to the University of San Diego, to study physics. He'd like to thank his physics teachers, Ms. Kelly Sweet and Mr. Williamson, and his counselor, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Next up, the homeroom of Mr. McIntosh. Letizia Bonara. Letizia joined us in grade six, coming to us from the International School of Frankfurt. Next year, she's off to the University of Oxford to study engineering science. She'd like to thank her parents, who have spent endless late hours reading through her essays. Wille Charlie Brink. Neil joined us in grade seven, coming to us from Sweden, South Africa, United States. Next year, he's off to the Netherlands to study psychology at Tilburg University. He'd like to thank all of his friends. Soham Chakraporty. Soham joined us in grade six. Next year, he's off to hope to attend Karlsruhe University Mechanical Engineering. I'd like to thank his parents, his brother, Mr. Watkin, Mr. McIntosh, and Mr. Duffy. Peyton Isabella Dadoja. Peyton joined us in grade nine from Pioneer Middle School in Cooper City, Florida. Next year, she hopes to pursue law in Ireland. She'd like to thank her family, friends, and coaches. Lara Marie Elaine Davis. Lara joined us in grade three. Next year, she hopes to be off to the UK to the University of Warwick to study engineering. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Theodora Alexandra Dulamea. Theodora joined us. This year in grade 12, coming to us from the Anglo-American School of Moscow. Next year, she's off to study literary sciences in the Netherlands, in Utrecht. Sarah 
Juliana Philip. Sarah joined us in grade five after living in Hungary, South Africa, and Sweden. Next year, she hopes to be off to study medicine at the college in Ireland. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Victoria Monica Gaida. Victoria joined us in grade 11 after coming from the Kiev International School and the Anglo-American School of Moscow. Next year, she hopes to study psychology at the University of Sussex. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Olivia Maria Hall. Olivia's been here since pre-primary. Next year, she's staying in Frankfurt to study at the Universe European School of Cyprus, the Frankfurt branch, to study medicine. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Han Ji Hong. Jimmy joined us in primary school, and next year he's off to England to the London School of Economics to study politics and economics. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Laura Marie-Claire Kehren. Laura joined us in grade 10, coming to us from the Queensgate School in London. Next year, she's back to London, to the city, University of London, hoping to study law. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Kimura Richter. Rafuto joined us in grade 7, coming to us from Japan and Singapore. Next year, he hopes to be off to the Imperial College of London to study computing. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Zeynep Koray. Zeynep came to us in grade six from Turkey, and next year she's off to hopefully the University of Tilburg to study psychology. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Louise Grace Elizabeth Miseres. Louise joined us in grade three from the American School in Switzerland in Surrey. Next year, she's off to the University of Edinburgh to study law and business. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Aaron Olbrecht. Aaron came to us in grade three from Belgium. Next year, he's off to the UK to study at the University of Warwick, mathematics. He would like to thank his parents and close friends. Isabella Piccoli Paganini. I mentioned Isabella earlier today. She came to us in grade nine from Portugal. Next year, she's off to Georgetown University to study international politics. She would like to thank her family. Maxwell Oliver Svensson. Max joined us in grade three from the United States and in India. Next year, he's off to Canada to study economics at the University of British Columbia. He would like to thank his family. Tian Chaojun. Xiao Jun joined us in pre-primary school. Next year, he's either going to be in Canada or Germany studying business or engineering. He would like to thank his family and friends. Samuel and Weiss. Samuel joined us in grade 10, coming to us from the International School of Luxembourg. Next year, he's off to the University of Leeds, hopefully to study computer science. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Next homeroom, Miss Rosetto.
Sophie Victoria Bess. Caroline joined us in first steps. Next year, she hopes to be staying in Germany to study medicine. She'd like to thank her grandparents, all of her teachers, Ms. McClutzy, Ms. Vandermeer, Coco, and all the security guards. <laughs> Andrew Michael Beatty. Andon joined us in ninth grade from Hong Kong. Next year, he's off to New York University to study liberal studies. He'd like to thank his parents and grandparents. Samuel Bobby Biswas. Samuel joined us this year in grade 12, coming to us from Brookwood High School. Next year, he's staying in Germany to study at the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. He'd like to thank his parents. Jorin Anna, Anna Willemain Freling. Jorin joined us in grade eight. Next year, she hopes to be studying at Erasmus University of Rotterdam, studying International Business Administration. She'd like to thank her mother, father, sister, and her brother, Alexander. Miles joined us in the primary school. Next year, he hopes he's got some applications in progress to study automotive design here in Europe. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Fabian Leo Arin Hoffmann. Fabian joined us in grade 11 after being in Nepal, Thailand, Uzbekistan, Laos, Myanmar, and Ukraine. Next year, he hopes to be studying at the University of Twente in the Netherlands, studying chemistry and chemical technology. He'd like to thank his parents and his brother. James Robert Holmes. James joined us in grade eight, coming to us from Porter Ridge Middle School in North Carolina. Next year, he's back to North Carolina to study at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, studying data science. I'd like to thank his parents, his family, and friends. Eva Viola Victoria Kessler. Viola joined us in grade four. Next year, she's got some applications in progress to the University of Madrid, Business or Erasmus University Media and Communication. She wants to thank her mama, papa, Liva, Constantine, and Maximilian. <laughs> Hannah Loschella. Hannah joined us in grade two. Next year, she'll be in Austria at the Danube Private University to study dentistry. She'd like to thank her parents and her family. Bennett Matthews. Zan joined us in grade 10. Next year, he's off to the UK to study at University College London, Engineering and Architectural Design. I'd like to thank his family and friends. Mishti Rai. Mishti joined us in grade 3. Next year, she's got some applications in progress to study psychology here in Europe. She'd like to thank her parents, friends, and all of her teachers, especially Ms. Rosetto and Ms. Schubottom. Jay Brooklyn Reinald. Jay joined us in grade one. Next year, he's on a gap year to study law internships here in, in either here or India or the UAE. I'd like to thank his family and friends. Lucas Rodriguez Sleptis. Lucas joined us in grade seven next year. He's on a gap year, coding and physics courses, along with Spanish immersion. He'd like to thank his former physics teacher, Mr. Jonathan Brown. Elisavieta Sergeyevna Sorokina. Elisavieta joined us in grade four. Next year, she's taking a gap year to study German and pursue sports licensure. She would like to thank Ms. Foster.
Marcelle Marie-Elise van der Dijl. Rilla joined us in grade six. Next year, she hopes to be in Rotterdam to study obstetrics at the University of Applied Science. She'd like to thank her parents and the rest of her family and friends. Stein Michael Liefering. Stein joined us in grade one. Next year, he's off to Maastricht University to study international business administration. He'd like a shout out to Mr. Wade. Ryder Miltswood. Ryder joined us in grade three. Next year, he wants to stay in Germany. His videography and music. He'd like to thank his teachers, his family, and friends. The next homeroom, Miss Russo Scher. Next year, she's off to Brigham Young, Brigham Young University in Idaho. She'd like to thank her family, Miss Rosetto, and her friends. Emilia Boseski. Emilia joined us in grade four. Next year, she's taking a gap year for internships, sports, and travel. She'd like to thank her parents and her friends. Soleil Ananda Brisky. Soleil joined us in grade 11, coming to us from the International School of Paris. Next year, she hopes to be studying at the University College in Utrecht, studying liberal arts and sciences. She'd like to thank her parents and Miss Grabau. Yalu Samuel Ponsbach. Alou joined us in grade one, coming to us in the United States and Ethiopia. Next year, he's off to Erasmus University in Rotterdam School of Management. He'd like to thank his family, especially his mom and dad, and older sister, who graduated here in 2020. Alicia DeFeo. Elise joined us in grade seven. Next year, she's off to Ensign College in the United States to study business management. She'd like to thank her parents, Ms. Rosetto, Mr. Greg, Mr. Delacroix, and Frau Storm. To you. Marta Philippa Eklund. Philippa joined us in grade seven. Next year, she's off to hopefully the University College of London to study engineering and architecture design. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Emilia Ingeborg Haug. Emilia joined us in grade one. Next year, she's on a gap year, applying to medical school and traveling around the world pursuing internships. She'd like to thank her parents and her friends. Dela Graham Ingham. Taylor joined us in grade 11, coming to us from the Singapore American School. Next year, he's off to the United States to Hamilton College. He'd like to thank his family, friends, and his teachers. Artus Richard Kempsis. 
Art has joined us in the primary school. Next year, he hopes to be in Switzerland at the Etihad to study mechanical engineering. He'd like to thank his family for helping him get through the IB. Olivia Helena Cal. Olivia joined us in grade five. Next year, she's off to the London School of Economics and Political Science to study social anthropology. She'd like to thank her teachers, her classmates, and most of all, her family. Chewan joined us in grade 10, coming to us from the International School of Moscow. Next year, she's off to Canada, to McGill University, to study finance and economics. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Yuto Leon Kisna. Yuto came to us in grade six. Next year, he's off to Erasmus University in Rotterdam to study management. He'd like to thank his parents. Romani Hanuka Kobelt. Romani joined us in the primary school. Next year, she's off to Switzerland, hopefully to study at the Etiha Medicine. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Edouard Leandre Laflamme. Edouard started here in primary, then went to Ontario, then to an air school of Paris, and then came back here for grade 11. Next year, he's off back to Canada to study at McGill Political Science. He'd like to thank his family for their support. Owen Tennyson Laporte. Heard from Owen already today. He joined us in grade eight from Montclair Kimberley Academy in New Jersey. Next year, he's off to the University College in London to study liberal arts and sciences. He'd like to thank his parents, Miss Salvini and Miss Russo. Raphael Marcel Loiseau. Raphael joined us in grade eleven, coming to us from the International School of Helsinki. Next year, he's at VU Amsterdam to study psychology. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Sahia Manipali. Sahia joined us in grade eight. Next year, she hopes to be in Florida, the University of South Florida, to study psychology. She'd like to thank Ms. Shubata, Mr. Wynn, Proud Storm, and Ms. Singh. Noel Unal. He joined us in grade two. Next year, he hopes to be in Scotland at the University of Edinburgh to study innovation and enterprise. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Next homeroom, Mr. Siopolis. Ryland Frederick Josef Fjellbeck. Ryland joined us in first steps. Next year he's off to the United States to Gordon College to study pre-med and kinesiology. He would like to thank his family and friends. Teague Mason Fitzgerald. Teague joined us in grade 11, coming to us from Australia. Next year, he hopes to go back to Australia to pursue a Bachelor of Medical Science at Sydney University. He'd like to thank his teachers and his family. Jessica 
Jessica Elizabeth Garment. Just joined us in grade 11. Next year, she's taking a gap year to pursue travel and internships in Europe. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Gillian Arthur Romanus Ashoff. Gillian joined us in grade 7 from the Taunus Gymnasium here in Königstein. Next year, he's taking a gap year to work on some inter internships and travel in Europe and the world. I'd like to thank his family and friends. Joshua Jamie Harrison. Joshua joined us in grade seven. Next year, he's off to Dominican University to study physical therapy. He'd like to thank his teachers, his classmates, Dr. Potchman, his family, and especially his parents. Tara Elizabeth Heaton. <laughs> Tara joined us in grade eight from the Australian International School in Malaysia. Next year, she'll be applying to Australia to study business and environmental sciences. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Mieta Anna Heimstra. Mirta joined us in the primary school. Next year, she hopes to be off to Maastricht University to study European public health. She'd like to thank her family and close friends. Henry joined us in grade four from Finland. Next year, gap year in military service and then the international business at Alto University. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Kim Lian. Leanne joined us in grade 11, coming to us from Midway High School in Sangnam, South Korea. She has applications in progress in Germany and South Korea to study medicine. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Kim Taeun. Taeun joined us in grade 2. Next year, she will be taking some applications to study pharmacy in Korea. She would like to thank her family and friends and teachers here at FIS. Alejandra Isabella Nogla. Alessandra came here in grade 11. Next year, she's off to the Virginia Military Institute to study biology and psychology. She'd like to thank Ms. Rosetto, Ms. Salvini, and her grandmother. Lee Toyun. Toyun joined us in grade eight. Next year, she hopes to be studying international relations in Korea. She would like to thank her parents. Nicholas Lubus. Nicholas joined us in first steps. He's hoping for a professional football career starting here in Frankfurt. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Erin Lisa McKnight. Erin joined us in grade 10 after being in the Netherlands, Switzerland, and France. Next year, she's off to Italy to Bocconi University to study economics and finance. She'd like to thank her parents, her brother, and the faculty. Victoria Sophie Schiebel. Victoria joined us in grade four. Next year, she's off to Scotland to the University of St. Andrews to study biology and sustainable development. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Edison Lee Ann Spellman. Edison joined us in grade 11, coming to us from George Mason High School and also the QSI School in Armenia. Next year, she's off to Missouri State University to study forensics. She'd like to thank her family and friends.
Max Tröttschel. Max joined us in 11th grade, coming to us from the International School of Manila in the Philippines. Next year, he'll be applying to German business or design schools. He would like to thank his mother and father. Olivia Mary Francis Venter. Olivia joined us in grade nine. Next year, she's off to Radford University in Virginia, studying nursing. She would like to thank her family, friends, and teachers. Jeremy Sky Vina. Jeremy joined us in three primary. Next year, he's off to England to the University of Sussex to study business management. He'd like to thank his family, his friends, and his teachers. Last but not least, the homeroom of Mr. Treble. Khan joined us in grade six. Next year, he's off to the University of Tente to study computer science. We'd like to thank his mother. Morgan Olivia Beatty. Morgan joined us in grade seven. Next year, she's off to Smith College in the United States to study dance and biology. She'd like to thank her mom and dad, Mr. Gregg, Mr. Delacroix, Mr. Gravau, and all of her teachers. Luis Jacob Daniello. Luis joined us in three primary. Next year, he'll be taking a gap year to do some internships in medical research and ski instructing. He'd like to thank his parents. Alexander James Fial. I mentioned Alexander earlier today. He arrived here in first steps. Next year, he's off to Tufts University in Boston to study international relations. He'd like to thank all of his teachers who helped him through the IB. Maria Petra, Petrova Gruev. I also talked about Maria earlier today. She arrived in grade four. Next year, she hopes to be pursuing computer science in Switzerland at the ETIHA. She'd like to thank Ms. Piera, Mr. Miller, Frau Storm, Mr. Zimilopoulos, Mr. Draft, her mom and dad, and her sister. Douglas Kai Jochum. Douglas joined us in first steps. Next year, he hopes to stay in Germany to apply for universities in the area of management. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Altan Mehmet Koryurek. Altan joined us in grade one. He also wants to stay in Frankfurt and also wants to study at the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management for Business Administration. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Lukas Sheen Kunke. We heard Lukas' talents earlier today. He arrived in grade seven, and next year he hopes to be off to IE University in Spain to study economics. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Clemens Federico Pappenheim. Clemens joined us in first steps. Next year, he's off to the UK to study at the University of Exeter, law with business. He'd like to thank his family and friends.
Pak Seha. Vivian came to us in grade seven. Next year, she hopes to be applying to architecture in a number of countries. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Grace Ann Rutningen. Grace joined us in grade eight. Next year, she's off to Leiden University in The Hague to study international relations and organizations. She'd like to thank her family and friends. Clarissa Helena Steding Dominguez. Clarissa joined us in the fifth grade. Next year, she wants to stay in Germany to study at the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, Philosophy and Economics. She'd like to thank her parents and her brothers. Kim Lara Stachlage. Kim joined us in the first steps. Next year, she hopes to stay in Germany to study medicine. She would like to thank her family and her friends. Nandor Chikeli. Nandor also joined us in First Steps. Next year, he hopes to be in Rotterdam at the international, to study international business at the Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences. He'd like to thank his parents and his brother. Markus Sebastian Trotzenberg. Marcus joined us in grade seven. Next year, he's off to the United States, to Fordham University in North New York City to study global finance and business and economics. He'd like to thank his mom and dad. Chan Ucha. Chan joined us in grade seven. Next year, he's off to Erasmus University in Rotterdam, School of Management, to study international business and administration. He'd like to thank his sister. Finn Gustav Wendland. Finn joined us in grade three. Next year, he's on a gap year to study European business internships and volunteer. He'd like to thank his family and friends. Elina Ilmatz. Elina joined us in grade eight, coming to us from Hisar School in Turkey and then the International School of Brussels. Next year, she's applying to German universities, hoping to study biology. She would like to thank her family and friends. Let's give them all a big round of applause. guys have a lot of applause too. You've been clapping now for like an hour straight. Uh, so now on to our final performance this afternoon. I'd like to invite Mizuki Shuzenji to the stage. Mizuki will be performing a song, All That Matters, from the musical Finding Neverland. The music and lyrics are by Gary Barlow and Elliot Kennedy. The musical tells the story of how Peter becomes Pam. For a moment in time, which is very relevant to this afternoon, all stress is left behind, and there is an inspiration for a new day. Finding Neverland reminds us all. The difficulties in life are real and tough, but we can always look for inspiration to find new direction around us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mizuki Shuzenji.
But my friends need so much more from me And they give me the strength to go on Whatever may come All that matters now Is where I go from here There's an easier way if I live for today Never explain Turning all of my sadness into a smile Helping me live life again It's the light in the eyes of my friends It's the sound of their laughter once more It's the glimpse of a life I dared only to dream And the dream reached the end of our ceremony today. There's only one more important task that gives me such great pride. To the graduating class of 2023, could you make your way to the floor and surround your parents? On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Frankfurt International School, I hereby declare the graduating class of 2023 officially graduated. Graduates, you can turn and face your parents. And you may now switch your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations. And you may now throw your hats.